previous video, we went through sizing, we went through um, uh, sizing the system, we went through battery options and solar options. Uh, in a previous video, we also went through different lithium ion battery uh, setups, Blue Eddy versus Goal Zero versus uh, others. Uh, and so you can find that video out on the channel as well. Now we're going to talk a little bit about everything else that goes into the electrical system. Um, and you've got a bunch of stuff in your Amazon shopping cart, Paul, uh, that I think maybe we just go through and talk about. Sure. So um, the Amazon cart does not have everything and uh, might have to remove a few things. Just saw the this T-shirt here. Um, I, think, I think that is probably the most important part of the system. Yeah. Um, little Mandalorian, but... Uh, Let's take a look at what I've got here, JP. So originally, and this this is still in here from before we started talking about the kind of the, the package deal moving away from the AGM um, battery. So I, I'm thinking this is going to go. I think we we from in my case we don't need. I think that's true. You you won't need the inverter if you're going with the blue eddy. And uh, just updated with this when I had to add it back. So do you want to work your way top to bottom or accessories? Because I've got the lights. I've got a few buttons. Um, yeah. Let's go through. Uh, let's go through top to bottom. It's just the easiest way to maybe to stay organized here. Uh, so the master control switch there um, up at the top, you don't necessarily have to do that. But it, the nice thing about that is that um, you when you get ready to park the trailer, you can just reach over, turn this thing from on to off, and we'll wire it in a way that it shuts off every single possible thing that could have a current draw. You don't have to unplug anything. We just basically turn it off. And um, so I think it's good to have in a system. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's red or black. So you can. Well, it's, uh, it's uh, $4 cheaper if it's black. Oh, is it? Okay. As long yeah. as you were able to find it, um, then I think uh, red will be fine or black will be fine. Yeah, that's one thing you have to check because things sometimes are out of stock and they don't come later. I've noticed a lot of the supply chain these days has yep. been problematic. So you find what you're looking for, but it doesn't come for a couple of months. So, so um, okay. So on, uh, on wiring as we're going to the next thing in the list, you know, the things that I've kind of learned here over the... Uh, over the last few years of, of messing around with these things is that making sure you size your wires appropriately for the length that you're going to be running them and the amount of current you expect to go through them is very important. Uh, putting fuses on every single thing is very important. Um, and this master control switch that we just talked about, I think is important um, because you can start an electrical fire with this stuff. Um, so that that's that's how you prevent from doing some of that. Um, this is my main breaker, right? This is it, right at the beginning of the entire system. So this yep. is it's like your everything. master power switch, you know, basically yeah. whatever we do coming out of the fuse panel will go into this. And then whatever comes out of this will go into some section of the blue eddy. And so if you do that, you're killing power to everything downstream. The sound system, we can skip the speakers here, JP, because I know we talked about the radio and that does take, if I remember correctly, was was it eight amps? I, I, that was a ballpark, yeah. Um, and uh, thinking we'll go with a Bluetooth, probably some sort of a wireless system that I can bring the speakers outside uh, or inside. Mm -hmm. So we can skip that if that's okay with you. Okay. What are you thinking on lights? So low profile, um, I, I want... I, I only have an inch in the ceiling. And uh, so I was look, this is the brand I have now in the cart. Uh, they make a lot of outdoor lighting, landscape lighting. Um, they do some RV lights. And this is a eight pack of 12 volt LEDs. Um, I didn't want them to be too bright. So these are 240 lumens and they are dimmable for extra mood on top of the mood oh. lights. <laughs> and uh, so I was thinking along the, the ceiling, having six, so three on each side, kind of running yep. equidistant, 
and then two possibly under the cabinets in the nose. I'm thinking we'll probably have a cabinet with a small counter and then uppers and then under the uppers have a couple of these over the counter. So that yeah, looks great. Uh, since you since they are dimmable, we haven't contemplated a dimmer switch yet in the rest of your carts. So we should maybe talk about that a little bit uh, later. So I'll make a note. Um, so these look pretty straightforward. Um, don't know if so they're quite small. Yep. So you can see here the very low profile 0.6 inches from top to bottom and they're side to side two and three quarter and so they're really quite small yeah they, they look nice. pretty similar to the ones we put in uh in mary's van um in that build and uh yeah so i think on these the main thing is the reviews on amazon are good so they probably have pretty decent uh, life to them and uh uh, as long as you're comfortable with the amount of lumens and the temperature color and um, all that kind of stuff, then yeah, I, I mean, these are great. And the, the current draw is tiny, I'm sure. What, does it say the wattage on them? Um, have... I mean, as long as they're LED, I know they're going to be small. But... Yeah, no, I know it was low, but I th guess. The three watts. Three, three watts. Light. Yeah, yeah, but tiny. Yeah, you know, and you basically take watts divided by uh, volts uh, to get the amp draw, and so you know, three divided by twelve, so you're at uh, at a fourth. You're point two five. I think that's actually what we estimated on the whiteboard yesterday, or Monday, whenever that was. Uh, so we were actually right on the mark. Um, it was uh, 0.25 times eight lights, uh, so two amp draw for your uh, your lights. Yeah. So. And and these and I agree the the lumens is important, and this particular set has either the natural white, mm -hmm. you know that whiter white, or the warmer the three thousand, yep. warmer white. So. Yeah. Whatever you need to uh, to set the appropriate mood. Exactly. It's all about the mood. It is. So. So we don't have the wiring or the dimmer switch, so we'll have to make a note of that. So let's jump down to the relay next, um, because you may or may not need this. So we did this in uh, in in Andy's ambulance build. Um, so if you click into that guy there, so what this is, is this is a latching relay, and basically that just means it has memory. And so you you wire power into one side, you wire your lights into the other side, and you wire your switch in. And when you press the switch, it changes the state of the relay, either open or closed on different circuits. And so with this one relay, you could have one switch that you walk into the trailer and so you said you're going to do three, three lights down each side, you know, two, two, and two. You could think of those as zone one, zone two, zone three. You walk in, you push the momentary on button, zone one comes on and stays on. You push the button again, zone one goes off, zone two comes on. You push the button again, zone two goes off, zone three comes on. You push the button again, all three zones come on and stay on. Um, it's, it's a nice touch um, and it's kind of fancy, but to be honest with you, you could get a three gang switch with little rocker switches and you could have zone one switch, zone two switch, zone three switch or all switches on it's a, it's up to you um it's uh it's you know it, it's a, it doesn't matter if you want one switch you want three switches that's the big difference uh it was a nice touch in the ambulance it's really sweet the way that it works and we're a year plus into that build now and i don't think andy's had any trouble uh with that setup at all um it's up to you. If you want yeah. to want to do that, we can do that. If you want to do one switch or three switches in a three gang set, you can do three switches in a three gang set. No, I, I like the idea, and because I do think we'll be wanting. It's not going to be all or nothing with those six or eight lights. Certainly, the under cabinet lights will be separate. Um, even the six, the one of those is over the dinette. Mm -hmm. You know, 
two on the other side or over the bunks. Like I can see us designing zones that would be really neat for, yep. for this. So I think this would be nice to have. And we may be able to incorporate, because you remember the kitchen's in the back and that might be a separate light, but run from the same system and same switch where I could do all zones, including the kitchen, just the kitchen, interior, interior under the cabinets. You know, we, I think we could design something that's really neat. If you go back up to that, Paul, um, let's look at it there for a second. I'm trying to remember. Um, this one looks like it has. Uh, I have to do just a little bit of research offline here and see. We want to make sure that we have one that has three zones. And so you've got different options here at different price points. Um, so that one, that, that, when first one only has one zone, I can kind of see that by looking at it. Um, and then if you go down to that one, see where it's got the A and the B. Um, and then is there one that has an A, B, and a C? No, it looks like these are one zones and these two are two zones. This one does 12 volt. This one maybe doesn't. So it looks like this is the only one and it's only got two zones. Yeah. So we definitely want a two volt or 12 volt um, with two or more zones. And we might just check offline to see if we can find a 12 volt with three zones on it. Um, I know this is the one I sent you. Um, there may be a 12 volt with three zones that we can find later offline and, uh, and incorporate sure. with them. And we and with the with these things, if you're comfortable with it on these parts, they're like $25, $28 or so. We might order a couple of them um, just to give us a little bit of flexibility. If we change the way we want to wire something, we've got an extra part. If not, you can send it back. Yep. Okay. Although we're very bad at returning Amazon purchases. I yeah. Could... yeah. It, uh, <laughs> sometimes they make it really easy just to keep it. Yeah. Um, and then the switches. So, you know, I, I found a couple of different examples here and sent them to you. Um, I think that first one there, the latching butt push button. Um, so does that mean it's latching and it has the, the latching relay built in or is it just when you push it, it locks in? That's what I thought. I, I interpret it as latching means when you push the button, it stays in. Yeah, well, that's actually a, it pops out. a technical term on a latching relay means it has memory. When you push it, it stays, you know, engaged. The relay stays engaged. Not that it's not a mechanical latch; it's an electric latch. Um, does it have a wiring schematic down there on on either one of these? Keep going down through the picks. Mm, I can't really tell from that. Here's the other question about this. So I like the, in the ones we did in the ambulance build, when you push them, you, it lights, the halo light lights up, the little blue halo, um, which was kind of neat. Um, and you, it only happens when you push it, right? Uh, so when you let off of it, it goes away. It's kind of a nice, nice touch. I think the ones you had in your shopping cart right below that also had halo lights in them, um, but they didn't say they were latching. Right. And uh, these had an option for being lit or not oh. lit. And I'll be honest, these, I think these aren't. I'll be honest, um, if you're in a small trailer, and this is just back in the days, even from when I used to travel a lot, um, hotel rooms and some rooms would have really bright smoke detector lights or the furnace, you know, the thermostat. And, and I don't know what it is, but I developed a sensitivity to these bright, kind of lights even though they're small and when you're in a small space in a trailer and you have that one light that power that's just really bright you end up looking for tape or something or you know to cover it up yep and so i think that's something to consider is you know where are all these annoying little lights going to be coming from and it's one thing if it's only lit up when you turn it on but it's another when you have components that have a bunch of little lights and clocks and things. So I'm actually erring on the side of darkness here for I like it. I'd rather have dark switches unless they only light up when I turn them on. 
Yeah, I agree with you 100%. I've got electrical tape over certain displays in, in different places for that very reason. So yeah, that, that's fine. Here's the, uh, here's the thing with these switches. How do we want to mount them, right? So the cool thing is with these is you just drill a hole and put them wherever you want them. You don't really necessarily have to have a switch panel uh, to put them into. If you're okay with like mounting them in the face of something, we can do that. Yes. So the exact location we have to, to finalize once we look at the bunks and, and where they finish by the door and if there's space there mm -hmm. on the left when you come into the door or I think the natural place would be to the right. So when you come in through the side door, your the right is the nose. Mm -hmm. So that's where the cabinet is going to be. Now, whether it's in the cabinet or in the nose wall or in a partial little wall there a utility wall where we have a, a panel with you know a few things that that's the option right now I'm leaning towards building a bit of a of an area in the nose that where I have all my my panels and switches so here's another consideration for you Paul is you are going to want to switch to put on your water pump you're going to want to put, put a switch on your max air fan uh, you're going to want to switch for your exterior lights. You're going to want to switch for your mood lights. And then you have these two or three zones of your overhead lights inside. I'm trying to think of anything else, you know, that we might have in that list. I think that's it from our sizing exercise we did the other day. So while the push button switches and the latching relay are kind of cool and it's a nice touch for the lights, your water pump you want to just flip a switch and it stays on till you turn it off. Your Max Air fan, you probably just want to flip a switch. Now, it'll have a switch on the Max Air fan itself, but it's really nice to be able to lay in bed and reach over and turn the fan on or turn the fan off and not have to get up and do it. So there is a argument to be made here for rocker switches in a gang panel. And instead of doing the light zones and everything like that, just having a like a six gang panel uh, rocker switch um thought about anything like that right i i've seen switches that they sell for rvs and they, they're they're fatter they're kind of like a toggle switch and they're a little thicker they were if i remember correctly they were like 30 dollars per switch for, for a single switch and right. i don't know if i was looking on the wrong or maybe i was looking at switches that were you know, I had features that I didn't need. They look like regular switches to me, but I, I'm happy to, to look at a six gang. And also I think the switches, there will be some in the front, but you know, when you go to bed at night, I don't think it would be okay to have switch towards the, the bed or towards the back of the trailer as well. Um, yep. So um, I was just looking real quickly there on Amazon to see, um, I mean, the nice thing about these is that they are tiny, right? So they don't, they're not going to obscure uh, anything else, really. You can just kind of put them very discreetly where you want uh, for the different switches. Um, if we're going to use the push button switches for everything, though, we will need a component latching relay to go with them because these switches don't stay on by themselves, right? You push them, it's a momentary pulse. And then it, um, yeah, so something like that, um, you know, obviously would be a switch panel. Um, and, the lights. <laughs> and it's not as, yeah, without the lights. I and mean, it's just, it's not as, uh, it's not as clean and elegant as those little flush, flush mount um, switches. So um, we can go either way. You can go this way and we don't need the latching relays. Um, if you go, if you want the little flush mount switches though, and we're going to disperse them, they're not all going to be in one spot. You know, you got maybe one as you come in the door for your lights, you got one over the kitchen counter for the kitchen light. You've got an area where you have your water pump and your fan switch, or maybe you put the fan switch by the bed. If we're going to spread them out in the floor plan, then we can go with push button switches. And so if you're going to get, you know, count them up, how many you need, right? So for your three overhead lights, we can probably get away with one switch and the latch and relay for three zones for that. Um, if um, uh, And then so one switch for the overhead lights, 
one switch for the water pump, one switch for the max air fan, um, one switch for the mood lights, one switch for the exterior lights. So if you if you put five switches in your, or I'm sorry, six switches in your shopping cart, and you put in four of those two zone latching relays, we should have plenty. And then we can just uh, send back the extra. Right. Uh, keep in mind too, I think the pump, the water pump, because the kitchen's in the back, that'll be a separate switch in the kitchen area. Yep. And so as far as what's in the actual trailer for the mood lights, the, the little puck lights and the fan, you're looking at three. And I, I think we also have to consider incorporating the dimmer switch for both the puck lights and the mood lights which i think we're getting back to more toggle mm -hmm. for the lights inside the trailer because of that right um i mean you could do the latching relay and a separate dimmer switch um we might be able to find a dimmer switch on off combo though uh that's more of a dial um, right. There's a really cool company. I don't know if they make 12 volts or not. We'll have to look at it and see called Buster and Punch. Um, so if you just Google Buster and Punch, they're out of the UK. They have some really cool looking switches, maybe too, maybe more fancy than what you want to do. No, I, I, I think the, the little things, this is just me and it may not be for everybody because I know a lot of trailers out there rust. People are happy to go quite rustic. Um, I personally think it, the little touches um, that sure, you know, instead of paying, you know, $2 for a switch, I pay 25, but these are things that really change, you know, the, the look and feel. And these are little details that I, I think matter. So Buster and Punch. I believe that's the name of it. Yeah. Well, oh, here we go. Yeah. I, I, they have some cabinet hardware. Let me share the screen here again. They've got electrical. Yeah. They got cabinet hardware and lighting, but there's some of those really cool switches, right? Um, yeah. but these may be on the higher. So if you go to their dimmer switch there, for example, mm -hmm. and you can get these, this nice anodized black, or you can get brass or silver or white. Um, but these, these may are be expensive. Yeah. <laughs> these are not $30. These are hundred plus. So a white one here would be 92 or a black. They probably feel great too, right? They probably have oh, that. I'm sure. Like if you click on that brass finish too, like if you got it uh, with a black ring and then a brass finish. So you can even mix them up where it's like a black face plate and then a, a brass dimmer thing. So you can build your own even. Um, wow. That's fancy. And now yeah. is this 12... Does it matter? This is another thing I had when I first started researching. Does it matter the switch? So I have uh, outdoor lighting, landscape lighting around the pool. That's all uh, low voltage. Yep. So the light fixtures could be anything. So I have the, the poles right out of the ground, the, but the light bulbs had to be 12 volt. Yeah. And of course my little transformer. For these types of switches, it matters. I can't just take a 110 switch and apply it to a 12 volt in the in the trailer right i don't think there's a, a complete easy answer here the, the 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 short answer is is it depends if it'll handle the 120 um then it'll it obviously will carry 12 um but it but for on off i think that's an easier answer than it is for a dimmer Right, so on off is binary. It's just it's either carrying twelve volts or it's carrying one hundred and twenty, and you know it's binary. But for a dimmer, you, you have to dig a little deeper there and make sure that it'll go down to the lower voltage you need. The good news is is that if you're on a twelve volt circuit, you're not going to magically all of a sudden put one hundred and twenty into your light because it's just not there, right? The right. And, and so in some ways, the dimmer switch is working from zero percent up to one hundred percent of whatever the source is. Um, but there's a little bit more to it than that. But these are cool switches. This is what you were, this is what you were talking about customizing yeah. the uh, the colors here. Yeah, look at that. So th this would be the the granddaddy combo where we've got on off dimmer and the receptacle. Yeah, isn't that pretty? And so you could, and then we could wire the receptacle basically as an extension cord off of the Blue Eddy. 
okay, I'll research this, but it, this looks like a, looking at the prices of the other ones, this looks like a $300 piece. This is like the platinum camper build. Yeah, we just upgraded from gold to platinum. It's pretty though. Oh. Well, here, here's the price. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, let's research it some more, but uh, yeah, we're, we're going away from rustic definitely when we start looking at this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so you don't have you don't have wire. So we, we can get the fuse box off the list here. So this fuse panel, uh, and the, again the blue eddies fused already. But um, this is a kind of a good belt and suspenders here where we're we're double uh, double protecting. Where did, where, where did the fuse? Oh, did you just take it out of the cart? I did. Oh, I would leave it in there because it, it like I said, it won't it won't hurt to have it in there in addition. That way. If some point in the future you decide to sell the trailer and a person coming in behind you is going to do lead acid instead of putting a blue eddy back in there, everything's already wired for fuses and ready to go. Tell me what that fuse box was, JP. Do you remember? Blue C, hmm? blue C fuse panel. There you go, blue C fuse block. You know, have a couple of different options. Um, and so we were down the ways here. I think we were looking at a 12 circuit with a negative bus. Okay. So 12 just basically gives us 12 individual zones and the negative bus means that we have our positive and negative all in one spot to wire to. And so everything would run after my main control, my on off switch after that now it's starting to to distribute it through this to my different circuits if you will so i'd go one of them would be used to go to the switch that lights my puck lights my mood lights separate one for my um max air fan separate one for for the water pump so this is really where everything starts yeah so this you is the the panel, this is the panel. Out of your 12 circuits here, your max air fan would be on one, your water pump would be on one, your fridge would be on one, your ceiling lights would be on one, you might do the stereo um, on one, you might do the mood lights on one. But yeah, we're, we're beginning to separate out the system here for troubleshooting and safety and all of those types of things. And most likely we will do one set of positive and negative leads out of the fuse panel into the Blue Eddy and that'll run the majority of your system because you have one 25 amp circuit on the Blue Eddy for 12 volt, and that's where this guy will go into. The only deviation to that is, is that we might put the diesel heater um, on its own 10 amp circuit on the Blue Eddy. So it might skip the fuse panel and go directly into the Blue Eddy, um, something like that. Got it. And then I was gonna look here, Paul, real quickly, wire link uh, amps. So I, I know we kind of exchanged emails on this the other day, but let me pull up this on my side and share my screen for a minute if I can. Sure. Um, get it to pull up. All right, I'm gonna, oh, I'm now the host. I gave it back to you. No, nah. such a kind guy. Share. All right, can you see the chart? Yep. All right, so amps up our y-axis, length of the run on our x-axis and the gauge of wire that we need because you're gonna need to get a spool of wire for us to do all this stuff with. Um, and uh, so- Sorry, when you say spool wire, what do you mean? Uh, like a, like a, a spool, like a spool of thread, but a spool of wire that will come out of the fuse panel and will go up with a wire to the overhead light. Uh, okay. And, and um, I, I thought maybe you were referring to, I've noticed some people have, so typical house wire, it's, it's all together, right? Your, your hot, your ground, and your uh, white, black, and copper. So sometimes they're separate, yep. positive and negative, um, in two separate spools. 
Yeah, ideally, and we'll search on Amazon in just a minute, we'll get one that is coaxial. So you'll have your black and red, your positive and negative together in, in one set of insulation, but it'll have two wires um, and it'll be of a certain gauge. And so you'll have 100 feet of, um, you probably need more than 100 feet because you go through it pretty quick. So let's, let's just yeah. kind of talk through that real quick. So your trailer is seven foot wide and 12 foot long. And so if we're, if the fuse panel is in the nose of the trailer, then in theory, the longest run you would have would be 12 foot to the back of the trailer and seven foot uh, down to the nose of the trailer. So 19 feet plus, let's say then it's three feet down the wall on, or five feet down the wall on the back. So if you're coming up from the nose across the back, halfway down, you know, you could have a you could have a pull that is 24, 25 feet in length for one pull. So, for example, your kitchen. Uh, let's think through this. Your kitchen's going to be on the back, and you wanted your water pump switch on the back of the trailer, but your your battery and your fuse panel are in the front. So it means we've got positive and negative coming all the way to the back of the trailer. We're and your water pump is in the back of the trailer. Let's assume for a minute the water pump's in the back of the trailer. We hadn't talked about that yet. Where are you going to put your water tank? Do you know? I think it'll be towards the back. It's just a question of whether it's in front of the axle or behind the axle, but it'll be right where the axle is. So one scenario is, is that you, you've got a positive and negative run that comes from the nose of the trailer up along the ceiling and down to the kitchen counter. You have an inline switch then the wire continues down to the water pump. Um, and so that assume means- Assume another that, six. What's yeah, that? assume another six feet. Uh, so down and across, so eight feet. Assume, say, another eight feet from the switch to the pump. Yep. So that's a, that's a 30, could be a 30-foot pull. Um, and your water pump you know, probably is drawn six amps. And so we're in this bottom rung here of zero to 20. So a 10-gauge wire- uh, would be fine for that. 10 gauge is, is heavier and harder to work with um, versus a 12 or a 14. Um, but with 12 in that zero to 20 range, we're only talking about a 13 foot pull before you start having voltage drop. And so, um, prob I mean, your little LED lights in the ceiling, you can get away with 12 or 14 gauge wire because they don't, uh, they don't draw anything. And it would be a lot easier to work with. So all that is to say, probably want to get two spools of wire, coaxial, one 10 gauge for the longer pulls with higher current draw, and one 12 gauge uh, for the shorter pull, shorter pull, a length of pull wires, or for the um, uh, lower current draw. If I were to hop to Amazon here and we just look at coaxial. Is there any reason not to just go with the heavier wire other than it's just easier to work with the thinner gauge? Cheaper, and, any... uh, ch cheaper, um, easier to work with, takes up less space. You can bundle more of it together. Got it. Trying to think of how Amazon so, is listed. So two lead wires. So here's an example. This is 18 gauge, which is smaller than what you need, but it's yeah. the positive and negative together. And so you pull, you know, basically one and you've got both. Um, so this is kind of what you're looking for. Stranded carries more current than solid. Um, I've heard stranded is better because I know with tying together you know, switches and electrical that the, the stranded wire is easier to work with and it's less likely to come disconnected and especially a trailer where there's movement, there's vibration and whatnot. I've heard that stranded is just going to hold a little better in the, uh, although I guess we're probably using um, heat shrunk um, connectors. Yep. So I have a, uh, I have a heat gun and then obviously the cutters and crimpers and stuff. We want to, we will want to get some heat sinkable terminals so that, you know, when we crimp the ends of the wire on and then we just heat sink them. So it's real nice and neat and professional and, and everything like that. Yeah. So 
there's a hundred foot of 18 gauge. We basically want to find a hundred foot of 12 gauge and a hundred foot of 10 gauge. Um, um, so landscape wire is something I've used um, when I was laying the, the lines. You can get 10 gauge, because it's, it's the same, right? Low, that low voltage, 12 volts, the same wire is, that would be viable. It just isn't red and black is what I remember. It was just two, two black wires. The, uh, yeah, the, so pop, the pros and cons are, you know, you're 25 feet away from where you hooked it into the fuse panel. Um, and if it's not red and black, um, hopefully one side of the insulation is, is, has some writing on it or stamping. So you know, which side is which. Otherwise, we have to get our voltmeter out and check it. So it's it's not insurmountable. Um, coming in after the fact and troubleshooting would require a little bit more work if it's not red to two color. Um, but uh, but yeah, totally manageable if you wanted to go to Home Depot and pick up a spool of low voltage wire. As long as the gauge is sufficient to carry the current, um, then I'm not going to cry about the color. So yeah. we'll we'll need quite a few feet because just doing that quick exercise on the pump in the back there, that's one one run for one one appliance, one 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 switch, one unit, if you will, the pump. And we were at what did we say, thirty feet? It'd be thirty feet, yeah. One could envision so you the, using three hundred feet of wire. So really, we'd probably be looking for. I don't know what lengths they come in, but we're, we're guessing about 30 feet for the heavier, the 10 gauge for the pump. Everything else can run probably on the 12 because it's going to be one circuit for the ceiling lights. But they oh, well, unless back. we do different zones, if you're doing different zones, it's three, diff three different pulls. Right, so it's not a continuous circuit. That's right. So that that's what that's another thing with the zones. You have to run separate circuit from box to light. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay, so then that'll just add. So we just have to do the measurements of running one wire each time. So each light conservatively, twelve feet plus the six, eighteen, say twenty feet per light, and that's plenty because some are closer. Yeah. Times six, 120 feet for the lights. Plus a pull from that circuit to where we place the switch could be another 10 or 15 feet. What about if there's two switches, one in the front, one in the back? Oh, uh, then you got two pulls. Yeah, okay. You would yeah, pull, so we're, you we're, pull, we're at 300 feet. You'd pull from your front switch to your relay and your back switch to your relay. And any one of them you push will change the state of the zone. Yep. And you're going to need something like this. This isn't the one you need, but you're going to need a basically a little wire assortment kit that has the different connectors that are heat sinkable or heat shrinkable. Mm -hmm. so that once we put them together, then you hit them with a heat gun and it makes them all nice and neat. Well, this is a crimp and shrink, I think. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we definitely will crimp, right? So it's probably more like this. Because you're going to want some ring terminals. You'll do ring terminals to the fuse panel. Mm -hmm. And then you'll want some butt connectors, which are these guys over here on the left hand side, so that, you know, when you got two lights wired independently and you need to join those circuits, we use a butt connector there and heat sink that. So you'll need some sort of assortment kit that is ring terminals that will go to your um, um, fuse panel and butt connectors. So those are two main things you'll probably be using are ring terminals and butt connectors in a gauge that matches the size of your wire. The last thing I don't know is the blue eddy, either there's gonna be some, some way that we access that port, right? So it may be like an MC4 connector, an Anderson pole terminal or something like that of how we plug into the blue eddy. We're gonna to have to figure out what that plug is and be able to plug it in. Right, and we'll need the wall receiver for the outside of the trailer as well. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the actual plastic. Like the short power thing. Yep. For 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 shore power. 
and then like you for solar then it's a separate piece coming in yeah and um i'll see if andy can send me a link to the shore power receiver that he used on the ambulance um because it was nice and heavy duty and also to see if he can help us figure out what uh uh thing we use to come through the roof um in uh, in the ambulance to get the solar panels in yeah yeah the the arctic turn folks so that's where we bought the windows uh, we're waiting for those to come uh, late well actually it'll be early next week um, but they also sold the the pieces for the water inlet and the shore power inlet oh uh, so it's just a nice plastic attachment um might get it from them uh, then because it's probably pretty well made yeah, there, there are a few that, that make them and they range, you know, 30 to $60 per. I think it makes a difference. Again, this is the exterior. I want it yep. to look nice. Uh, I think I will go black because of the color of the trailer. But it's crazy. Once you start looking at the options and how you, if, if you want to do it well and you start evaluating your options, uh, you can actually overanalyze this stuff. Um, even, you know, for simple pieces, you can really get lost in the research. Yeah, <laughs> you can. Um... Well, did you get what you need for today? And it sounds like there's a few pieces still to research yet, which are the terminal connectors. Um, uh, you got to figure out your shore power and water inlet uh, uh, pieces. I'll try to do a little research and see what we need to plug into the Blue Eddy with. Um, yeah. And you got to decide whether you're going to go buster and punch or some other sort of dimmable switch. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at it here. I was I was starting to re look it up on on Amazon as well because that would be delivered a little quicker. But um, yeah, work out a few details. I'll add a few more things to my cart. We'll be able to place the order today or tomorrow, and as the pieces start coming in, uh, we'll be able to line everything up and start scheduling the the install. All right, text me back tonight if you run into any questions about switches or anything, and uh, then we can find some time for tomorrow to catch back up again. Dude, I will have a lot of questions. Sounds good, man. <laughs> I'll, have, I'll have a few answers. Not a, not a lot. But I'll, have a few. <laughs> I'll just have to pull the trigger. And like you said, if in doubt, order extra or, you know, order two versions. Just to make sure we have everything we need and return yeah. the rest. Yeah. Have you looked at water tanks yet or water pumps? Um, water tanks, yes. A little bit water pumps, no, other than videos that I've seen where people have gotten creative with using all kinds of setups. Something, if possible, that works, yeah, that works off of kind of like the Mobi, you turn the tap and it turns on. I'd rather not have a switch. Yep. Um, but I'm not completely opposed to it. Well, so I do need to do a little more. Think of it two ways. Your water pump itself will have a pressure switch, which is what the Mobi has when you turn it on and the water flows. And then you want a master power switch so that when you're not using it, you can just power it off. So you get to your campsite, you turn your master power switch on, water's not running until you open the tap. When you open the tap, water runs. When you close the tap, water shuts off. But if you're going to go on a three-hour hike, it's always a good practice just to hit that master power switch so that if a line bust, you're not sitting there spraying water everywhere. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I didn't realize that because there's a difference. The ready switch. And then I think some of the more rustic setups, it, it wasn't a pump like that. It was a on or off pump. Yeah, like little fountain pump. I have one to drain the hot tub. So when I have to change the water, I plug it in and it goes on. Um, so I, I think I might need a little bit of help there. I'll do some research on the pump. Yeah. The tanks, that's something we can talk about as far as weight. Um, and I'll have to measure out and double check the width between my my floor beams in the trailer. And then we'll have to discuss a little bit the weight distribution on the trailer because I think the, the space between the beams is a little different right behind the axle than it is right in front. That might dictate as well the where I'm looking for the size and shape of the water tank. So. Yeah. There's a lot, a uh, lot that goes into a build. Uh, SureFlow there, is a pump that I've used a couple times before. S-U-R-F-L-O, I think is, uh, but you basically it's a it's a twelve volt um, water pump with a pressure switch. 
Okay, I'll take a look. Um, how big is the tank in the Moby? 40 gallons. And you said even with 40 gallons, you, you really get into water management mode oh, um, yeah. if you're out for, for a week, right? Like, I mean, you, you end up going through it. You learn, you learn how to wash dishes differently. Um, like the first time I went camping with Sarah, uh, we went to an island where there was no water on an island. And uh, she washed dishes and made pasta or something like that. And about three or four hours into the first day, we were out of water. Uh, 40 gallons, <laughs> boom, gone like that. You don't think about it, but when you're at home washing dishes and stuff and the water's running, 40 gallons is nothing, right? Yeah. And so you get you get into the habit of, okay, you know, I'm going to turn on a small trickle to wash my hands. Um, I'm going to um, change the way that I wash dishes. I mean, yeah, you 40 gallons sounds like a lot and it goes, especially with, a, with an electric pump. Uh, you'll blow through it in no time. Yeah, so so you would recommend going roughly that size then, no smaller? Uh, yeah. 20, 20 weight is an issue. And 40 uh, would be nice. Right, okay. Because weight is an issue, right? A 40-gallon tank fully, you know, full is... is 300-something heavy pounds. enough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'll research in that in that range and see what what I can find. Um, I actually started thinking about how to brace that thing on these beams as well. So there's a few, and of course you have to do that well, because if you lose a, well, it's heavy, right? It, it's easy to put up, but when you fill it with water, that thing's pulling. And if you don't have the, the braces on, right, you'll end up with a sliding tank full of water on the asphalt when you're heading out of the neighborhood. So uh, <laughs> It's gonna be a little bit of structural work there as well. So exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, this was super helpful. Um, I'll, I'll kind of give you an idea of what's in my cart before I pull the trigger, just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay. And then I'll place the order. Sounds Hopefully, good. we can find everything on Amazon. It's easier that way. Yeah. Totally. Um, the Blue Eddy, I think I'll just go straight to their site if that's the one I end up choosing. I am leaning that way. Yep. But I'll, I'll give you an update when I'm about to place the orders. Sounds good, Paul. All righty. <laughs> Catch you later on. A lot of work, man. It just is. The hours keep at, not Not even including the research, just the, the work part. I know. Good fun. All right, man. Okay. See you. Bye. Bye.